Jim, congratulations. What pleased you most today? Um, beating Curzon. Um, I, I think um, we, we didn't look as energetic, perhaps, and we always felt there was maybe a touch of a hangover maybe from the previous game. I don't mean that. You know, players can't play with that adrenaline, that passion, and then a third game in eight days and play with the same sort of end. But tactical-wise, I thought they were very, very cautious first half. Right back made them look like a... A back and, and Rowney, number two, was playing right wing, made him look like a back five. Oh, and most yeah. stayed at home, so he stayed at home with six. So I think it was they were looking probably to contain us, and perhaps they did it away from home. It's worked really well from away from home. They got a lot of good results, and they've kind of played this game almost like an away game to so play on the counter, a pinch of goal. Um, but I was just really pleased because, um, like I said, we, as the game as the game moved on, I felt that we always. If we could just get into our stride, that would cause them a few problems, and we did. As you say, the first half was really tight. There were hardly any shots at all in the first 45. What a great time to score, though, and a lovely penalty from Sam again. Yeah, if I was, you know, as I said to refs coming off, you can see why we've got the best discipline record in the league, and you can see why they have won the worst. And uh, if they reflect on this game, they've lost it because of ill-disciplined foul, yeah. foul after foul late on, and then from a free kick they give away another foul penalty, and then. You know, another really bad foul, and it, the game seemed to be lit from them, and they kind of they turned into a horrible game. So, um, for them, from my perspective, it was uh, nice for Sam because I think uh, he, he's, you know, he's taken over that duty as such. But we're starting to cause teams problems in around the box now, and um, and you know, we're, if, the, if, if some, some of them can't, some teams can't stop us, and they're going to foul us and stop us with foul means, and I think they resorted to that, and it kind of, they, they paid a heavy price for it. They did, they ended up with six yellow cards, obviously one of them turned into a red. What did you make of the incident that re led to the red card for Cameron Channel? I, I, I thought it was a red, They're, they'll complain it wasn't, but I, I think if he goes in late with a shoulder, yeah. I think fine, it's a yellow, it's a bit mistimed, he's a young lad on loan. Uh, but when you go in with your arm and you make somebody's neck move in that fashion, I think it's dangerous and um, you know I, 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 you have to ask the referee um, you know is it violent conduct or serious foul play but if you're endangering opponent's safety I mean this is one of the dangers in football we're seeing quite a lot of head injuries at the moment concussions uh, you know and, and that, that's you know unfortunately got up um, they'll complain like mad but um, you know I think sometimes a team reflects a manager's personality and I think um, they certainly become more horrible as the game went on, whereas we kept our discipline. It led to people being sent off from the dugouts as well, didn't it? Yeah, but the, 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 you know, the couple of their bench were already being warned. Um, you know, they weren't happy with lots of stuff, but you know, rather than concentrating on getting their team playing football and, and working their shape and, and the positive stuff, they seemed to be kind of... You know, but look, like I said, they, they said that the way they performed, um, as the game went on, sort of reflected the manager's personality. And you got your reward then as a result, almost immediately, Elliot Osborne scoring the goal. And that kind of vindicates and justifies the decision to move him further up the pitch, and it was a, such an exquisite finish. It, it was a horrible game for Elliot, because um, you had Mo Ali, uh, you know, I had at um, uh, Northwich, great lad to play anywhere across the back, and he sort of uh, made it difficult for him to get any space and that. Um, Obviously, Mo had to drop in, and then Elliot gets a little bit more freedom. Um, but um, it was a really tough game because, like I said, we couldn't find any court, and we were working between players and couldn't find any space. But I thought I was really pleased with the uh, second goal because we've been working really hard on basically getting the ball down and playing from throwing. So it was brilliant play from the lads in terms of the way they combined and, and cut them open. And uh, I'd like to see more of that. Because uh, there's other times when we were, we're not as tidy and sharp as that. But I was really pleased with him because I think he's been yearning for a goal. And I think playing in that position, I think uh, he got himself that opportunity. There wasn't many opportunities got, but uh, finished with a plan. You made some good substitutions, I thought, today, at good times as well. And one of them, Frank Mulhern, came on, almost got a goal uh, towards the end when he hit the post. What a just give us a sense of how difficult the decision is going to be for you next weekend now at Yeovil 
<laughs> about who plays in the number nine shirt? I think they both play. Um, I think that's going to be the. I don't mean as a pair, yeah. but you know, um, you know, because like I said, I think it's a huge task yeah. playing as a nine on your own for a young lad. Um, I remember Aaron Rillbrand being hammered by Gary Megson, you know, when he played up front. That's it's a really tough job as an experienced lad being on your own, especially when the game deteriorates that you've got to work from centre back to centre back. But I felt like Niall didn't do himself any favours in the first half. Uh, sloppy little fouls. Um, bumping people when he really just be disciplined, let them clear into bad areas and we'll pick up the pieces. Um, and I thought, he, he, again, he, he sort of, the tone was manifesting itself in the second half and I thought, well, you know, he, he looked tired and looked like he was always going to be a yard off it and, and prone to those little barges and, and lazy foot. So I'm delighted for Frank and I was delighted to get Connor on the pitch because he trained so well. I just thought he, I'd love to see him get a goal. I'd love to see Warby get a goal. Um, you know, but like I said, we've got a very healthy 16 at the moment and we've got three great young lads in the likes of Jordan, Sim and, um, and uh, Adam Etches who we brought back into the group because obviously we, we've got the Warrington game on Tuesday and we need a, a, a slightly bigger squad for Yeovil. So um, but I'm, I'm really pleased with the group um, that we've come away from this game with um, uh, no injuries um, and a fully fit squad hopefully going into next game. How do you approach Yeovil? There's probably less pressure on that game than there was on, on maybe today really isn't it? Oh no I think there'll be as much pressure on that <laughs> game you know in terms of what uh, you know we, we're not there to entertain people we're not there to enjoy a day out at uh, the equal um, we're there to go and get a result and um, you know the lads have shown what they're capable of in these two games very professional and if you if you reflect on these two games they're very similar to the two games Corby and um, South Shields and, and uh, uh, also if you want to take all three games very professional displays Strong shape, purposeful attacking play, good set plays, and I think that, uh, you know I was up this morning at seven o'clock and um, flipped, I was watching Yeovil versus Carlisle and uh, Yeovil. Me too, yeah. Yeah, Yeovil have got um, Yeovil have got. Uh, look, the work started. <laughs> I haven't mentioned Yeovil before today again, no. but I start my process because. Um, We'll be talking about Yeovil, um, you know, uh, uh, this game, we'll reflect on this game, but yeah. we'll be talking. We have got the Warrington game in between, which is difficult for us. Um, you know, perhaps if um, if Warrington was still in the FA Cup, then maybe the Cheshire Senior Cup committee would have um, been a little bit kinder to both mm. clubs. But, um, but we have to play the game. Um, um, I'm not really bothered about the squad we put out in that game, and I don't think Warrington are because there's valuable league points and, and bigger cup competitions to be involved in. And uh, what we need to do now is a healthy week, get everybody recharged, get refocused. And um, you know, for those fans that, that I met during the week at the club, um, look, look, we want to—they're going to pay a lot of money and they're going to go a long way. And we have to put on a very, very solid professional performance for them. Looking at the bigger picture, another clean sheet today. Nine unbeaten. You've won six out of the last eight, I think. Um, it's all going in the right direction, this, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, I, I, I think um, you know after the, the non-eating game, too many people were pecking away at me, saying it's not right, it's not, you know, and blaming me. And I'm saying, well, you know, have a bit of courage and faith. Um, there's an adaption period for players to, to the game at this level. There's an adaption period to the way we train and what we want from them. And I think we're starting to see the fruits of it. And don't get me wrong, the, the additions of Jamie Starr and Elliot Osborne, but we're, we're working hard on everybody's game to get a little bit more out of them and add a little bit more to their game. And if they all improve, and that was a secret last year as we grew, uh, what hopefully will be in a position now that, you know, that because uh, I reminded the board that um, we were actually uh, had more points before this game. We had more points this stage, uh, this season, than we had last year. And look where we finished. So uh, the pressure is going to be on us when we went at, when we do eventually come out of the FA Cup to to pick up those to go to Blythe and go to Spennymore on a Tuesday night. So they're going to be tough games. But what I wanted the lads to do is ma get maximise the points they could for, before the over game. So we're sat in a strong position where that game in hand, if we win it, we're in the playoffs. So that's a, that's going to be the challenge when we exit. Uh, you know, after the over game, because we'll be back to league uh, on the following Saturday. Uh, Brackley's going to be a tough game. So, but we'll dust ourselves down after today. Um, really pleased for the, really proud of them. Um, it's another good day for the club in terms of the way we went about our business, and everybody's gone on happy. And uh, now we, like I said, we just prepare for the next game. It certainly was a good day. Well done. Thanks so much.